Hey, Math 20-1, today we're going to look at some reciprocal functions. So the first thing we want to remember is that all reciprocal functions will have a variable in the denominator. So if we recall rational expressions, any algebraic expression that can be written as the quotient of two polynomials is called a rational expression. Since division by zero is undefined, the denominator can never equal zero. So just like when we were learning about rational expressions, we're going to have restrictions on the value of the variable in the denominator as it can never equal zero. We call these restrictions non-permissible values. So for which of the values of x is each expression undefined? So a little review, 1 over 4x, x can never equal zero. 1 over x minus 5, the non-permissible value written as a restriction is x cannot equal 5. 1 over x squared minus 16. Remember, if you factor that denominator as a difference of squares, you get x plus 4, x minus 4. Therefore, the restrictions written as non or sorry, the non-permissible values written as restrictions are x cannot equal plus or minus 4. And 1 over x minus 3, 2x plus 5 has non-permissible values of 3 and negative 5 halves. So x cannot equal 3 or negative 5 halves. So Recall that from rational expressions, it is also very important when we talk about reciprocal functions. The definition of a reciprocal function, it's in the form of f at x equals g at x over h at x, where g at x and h at x are polynomials. And of course, as soon as you have a polynomial in your denominator, that denominator can never equal zero. So we will have restrictions on our variables, just like we did last slide. If you're asked to graph f at x equals 1 over x minus 2, here's what a reciprocal function will look like. The thing you have to remember about this, it's got a vertical line here. We call that vertical line an asymptote. And that vertical line has the asymptote at the non-permissible value for this function. x cannot equal 2. That's the equation of this line, x equals 2. That's the equation of the line called our asymptote. All right. So the function is undefined when x equals 2. On the graph, this shows up as an asymptote, this vertical line right here through x equals 2. An asymptote is a line that the curve approaches. We can see it approaches from the top and it approaches from the bottom, but it never, ever touches. So we call the line x equals 2 the vertical asymptote. We also have a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, which is called, which equals uh, y equals 0. So the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. That's also our horizontal asymptote. So here are asymptotes. The line x equals 2 and the line y equals 0. Note, domain and range. The domain is a set of all real numbers, but x cannot equal 2. So this graph goes forever right, this graph goes forever left, but it never ever touches x equals 2. It approaches it from the right and left, but never touches it. The range is a set of numbers, all real numbers, but y can never equal 0. Same thing here. This is a line y equals 0. The graph approaches it, but never touches it, but goes up forever. Here the graph approaches y equals 0, never touches it, but goes down forever. So our domain and range are restricted by our asymptotes. All right. Now let's practice graphing a reciprocal function. So graph the line y equals negative 2x plus 5, and then graph its reciprocal on the same axis. So you guys should be able to graph the line y equals negative 2x plus 5, it's got a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of negative 2. So let's graph that line. So there's the line. Y-intercept of 5, slope of negative 2. So you rise 2 and run 1 to the left. You could fall 2 and run 1 to the right. There's our line, y equals negative 2x plus 5. Now let's find the x-intercept of this line. So if I find the x-intercept of the line, that's going to become the vertical asymptote of our reciprocal function. We find x intercepts by letting y equal 0. So when y is 0, I solve for x. x is 2.5. So there's our x intercept at 2.5. If I want to do the reciprocal function then, I'm going to draw my vertical asymptote. 
right along the line x equals 2.5. So there's our vertical asymptote for our reciprocal function. Next, we want to find the values of the line when y equals positive 1 or negative 1. These points will become our invariant points. Invariant means they're not going to change. They're going to be the same on the line y equals negative 2x plus 5 as they are on our reciprocal function. So why do we want to find the points y equals positive 1 and y equals negative 1? Well, if we take the reciprocal of 1, we still get 1. And if we take the reciprocal of negative 1, we still get negative 1. So that's why these two points will never, ever change. So if you can find these two points, they're going to remain on the line as well as on the reciprocal function. So let's plug in y as 1 and solve for x. We get 2. Let's plug in y as negative 1 and solve for x. We get x as 3. So our two invariant points will be 2, 1 and 3, negative 1. So if I plot them on the line, the point 2, 1 is right about here, and the point 3, negative 1 is right about here. So those two points lie on the line, and they're also going to lie on the reciprocal function. They're the invariant points. They will never change. So we're almost ready to graph the rest of the reciprocal. We've got our vertical asymptote. We know the horizontal asymptote is a line y equals 0. We've got our invariant points which are never going to change. Last thing, the line increases during an interval, then the reciprocal will decrease during that same interval, and vice versa. So if I look at all the uh, y values here, from this interval on, from this uh, invariant point, these y values are increasing, this part of the graph, well now they're going to decrease right here. All right. And here these y values are decreasing. All right. They're going from 1 to a half to a quarter. Well, now those y values are going to increase. Same thing down here from this invariant point. If I look at these y values, these y values are decreasing. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Well, now they're going to increase. Negative a half, negative a quarter, negative a third, and so on. And here from this invariant point, this section of the graph, on the line, the y values are decreasing. Negative 1, negative a half, negative a quarter. So now they're going to increase. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. All right. So again, these curves will always approach the asymptotes, but never touch them. All right. So the equation for a reciprocal function, the equation of our line is y equals negative 2x plus 5. The equation for a reciprocal function would be y equals 1 over negative 2x plus 5. All right. Just remember that this graph also has a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis or the line y equals 0. Great. So if you follow these steps every single time, write out the vertical asymptote as the x-intercept of the original function, find the invariant points when y is positive or negative 1, plot those points, and then as intervals increase on the original function, they're going to decrease on the reciprocal function and vice versa. Then you can draw your reciprocal function from those invariant points, knowing where the asymptotes are. Excellent. So here's your assignment. We're going to work on this in class tomorrow.